Hushin's a really interesting business because it really speaks to the domestic Chinese consumer. Uh, there's a real value in education. Parents like to spend money in education, and so that really hits all the right notes exactly. there. Exactly. It ticked all the boxes, so everybody was, yeah. very, interest was very strong. It was very good. There are a lot of, there are some competitors, though, in the yes. space. New Oriental Education yes. is one of them. I've spoken to the CEO uh, in the past uh, in China. And it's interesting because the demographics are changing greatly with the easing of the birth restrictions. Yes. So now there are more children in the family. And now your market is bigger. Yes. Absolutely. So, what is your total addressable market? How do you how do you look at the opportunity? No, I think I think for them is 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 the culture of the Chinese culture. Obviously, tutorial and then education is very important. So, anything that follows that line obviously would 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 uh, get a great audience. And then with that, um, and then the investors sees that ap appetite. And then obviously, as you mentioned, with this multiple child policy, that address goes up. And then as the, the, the consumers, obviously, disposable income goes up, they have more to focus on the kids. And then therefore, this, this whole thing just rolls up, snowballs up. Mm -hmm. And then that's why I think that, that's why the IP was so strong. This is an IP on the New York Stock Exchange. You're yes. also an investor in Xiaomi, which chose to go public in Hong Kong. And it recently got approval to list Chinese depository receipts to list about 30 percent of the offering uh, in China, mainland China. What was the decision making process in terms of choosing Hong Kong, and then also mainland China for Xiaomi, because it, it's a real departure from what the other big Chinese tech firms have done in the past, the ones that have chosen to list in New York or in Hong Kong solely. Uh, no, I think, I think obviously in, in Obviously, it, there's a management decision, but I think obviously this needs to be exploring different options at every every turn, turn of the development. So I don't think it's uh, it's uh, um, CDR obviously is, is, is a big thing that's coming up, and then uh, Hong Kong Stock Exchange is doing its bit as well. So I think it's an overall development of the company itself. Because yep, sorry. No, this was your first IPO in the U.S., correct? Yes, for your firm. Yes, yes. Are we going to see more of that? Yes, we hope so. I mean, we are, uh, Haitung International is obviously putting a lot of effort into the States. And then I think that's something that we're doing okay in Hong Kong. We've done very well, done okay in Hong Kong. That's why we need to push outside. U.S. is obviously the kind of key uh, place we're investing into. We are India, Singapore, uh, uh, everywhere. But I think U.S. is something that we're pushing very hard on. We are fully licensed here, and that's why we're looking to do a lot more IPOs. Ine inevitably, we're thinking of the tariff situation between our two countries. Um, <laughs> how does that affect if at all, you know, the ability to come back to the United States and, and IPO stocks or, you know, any of our economic relationships here. Or is Doing it so, deals, is it so broad deals. that we just, uh, this is such a narrow story on the tariffs here. No, I, I'm, on the tariff thing, I think it's, um, it's a tricky one. Let me say it this way. Um, my son plays baseball for his school. He was playing here, had a good run, and then he was running to the first base, and the guy was, he was, saw the guy running, and then he thumbled the ball. And then my son came back and said, look, he was trying to get some brownie points from me and say, look, I learned from the art of war from school. I, wa I got to face first base not because I was better than anybody else, but because my competitor thumbled the ball. On the flip side, the, the kid who thumbled the ball, thumbled the ball or lost out not because my, my son ran any faster than anybody else, but it's just that he thumbled the ball. And then my, my son came back with a third comment saying, if that kid kept on going, I'm sure the ref or the coach would have had a word with him, and then the whole ball game would have stopped. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.